See, everybody's got the brain power to do well in the stock market. The question is whether you have the stomach for it. That's the key organ in the body. There's always something to worry about. In 1997, Peter Lynch, amongst the most brilliant and well-known investors in history, delivered an excellent speech on economic forecasting. He expressed some incredible things regarding the market and investing. But is it still relevant for today and tomorrow? It most certainly is, and here's the reason why. Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Winners. In today's video, we'll discuss some of the most powerful words and tips said by Peter Lynch in his phenomenal speech and the reason why you should ignore economic predictions. You don't have to look far to find apocalyptic predictions for the economy. Simply turn on the TV or go to YouTube and see the predictions about what will cause the next financial calamity, Great Depression or economic collapse and whether higher interest rates, inflation or public debt will be to blame you'll find the answers you're looking for. But in Peter Lynch's opinion, things are different. In his keynote speech, Peter stated that the stock market is where everything from financial calamity to the Great Depression occurs because everyone has the brain power to do well in the stock market but lacks the stomach for it. See, everybody's got the brain power to do well in the stock market. The question is whether you have the stomach for it. Which, in his opinion, is the body's most important functioning part. Peter attended school and grew up in the 1950s. There was a popular belief during this time that the economic depression was sparked by a stock market catastrophe. Well, that's completely incorrect. Since less than 1% of Americans own stocks, there was a severe economic depression in 1929. It wasn't caused by the stock market, but because the economy went down. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates and we had a big time crisis. In fact, we had several such depressions from 1850 and later. If we would have to count it from the year 1850, there were eight of them. People, on the other hand, never got the adjective in front of depression. It was a dreadful situation economically, but it was also referred to as Great Depression. People didn't buy stocks in the 1950s because they were terrified of another economic falldown. They were also constructing fallout shelters in anticipation of nuclear bombs and wars. Every one of these little countries has enough warheads to blow up the world 88 times. But who has built a fallout shelter? When people stopped worrying about it, there was always something else to worry about. In the 50s, there was the depression and nuclear war. Except for the early 1980s, the stock market had its finest decade in the 20th century from the 1990s. Within two years from then, oil was valued at $14. The experts, who were much better compensated at that time, predicted that it would fall below $4 and that economic depression would ensue. People started to believe it once more. Peter says that people predicted economic depression when the money supply was too rapid and now they predict it would be too sluggish, bringing it back. Do you recall the IBC debt? Many countries have businesses with difficult to pronounce names like Chase Manhattan and other chemical and manufacturing companies. These countries were labeled as underdeveloped or undeveloped when they weren't doing so well. But later, they were called developing countries. Peter Lynch also mentioned that people in the Middle East became economists and portfolio strategists over the weekend during the Arab Spring. You know, he was their bull if they took their lunch on the way to work. In fact, he was fully aware that the market was declining in October 1987. Dave Ellison, a young bank analyst at Fidelity Investments, remembered that he was about to take his first vacation in six years and he and his friends planned to go to Ireland and remain there. Here is a selection of Peter Lynch's most well-known speeches quotations. Make sure to learn something from this savvy investor. Lynch has a clear investment strategy that appears to be at odds with his stellar performance. He doesn't use sophisticated procedures to predict the stock market's future movements. Instead, he invests in low-cost, high-quality companies with well-understood business plans. Let's have a look at stock familiarity now. If you're familiar with Lynch's work, you're definitely familiar with his well-known adage, buy only what you know, since you know more about specific market segments than an outsider. Before Wall Street analysts notice, this might lead to outstanding retail stocks. Peter Lynch's successful strategy was taught to the public in his best-selling books, One Up on Wall Street, How to Use What You Already Know to Make Money in the Market and Learn to Earn Through His Approachable Style. It is critical to have a large corporation. Each share of stock you own is an investment in a real company. Because they have more to gain, small stores are frequently better stock buyers than large ones. According to Peter Lynch in One Up on Wall Street, Large companies make tiny moves, whereas small companies make tremendous moves. The current stock price represents the market's valuation of the company. The company is expanding. The best strategies for businesses to achieve this are organic sales and retail growth. 
The company's earnings, sales, and profit margins all rise. The stock is either undervalued in the market or its quality isn't fully understood. Two of these characteristics are common in successful small enterprises. They have a lot of organic growth potential since their personalization appeals to clients and they can keep growing for years. Analysts are uninterested in them. As a result, there's a significant chance that they'll be undervalued. Institutional investors sometimes avoid small cap companies for years because they can't buy enough shares to have an impact on their bottom line. Once customers start buying up the limited quantity of shares, the price of a small cap retailer's stock could skyrocket. If you follow Peter Lynch's investment strategy, it may be advantageous to prefer David's, the smaller brand marketer, over the Goliaths. This isn't to say that large cap stocks aren't worth investing in. It just indicates you shouldn't expect the same results from them. Home Depot, for example, is a reputable company. With almost 2,000 locations, its days of huge development are numbered. To know what to expect from your stocks and realize when their value is too high, you must first determine which group they belong to. Smaller shops appear to be good stock investments due to their untapped development potential. So the question today is how to avoid a stock market catastrophe? Lynch mentions in 1UP on Wall Street that hot stocks and hot industries are ones that garner a lot of early publicity. They may see rapid growth initially, but investors will quickly realize that the excitement isn't supported by profitability, earnings, or growth prospects. According to the author, if we had to avoid one stock, it would be the hottest stock in the hottest industry. Furthermore, competitors eager to profit from a hot product's novelty would soon enter the market with a copycat version, sinking the stock value of the original company. When a price falls, it usually falls dramatically. If you don't know when to sell, you could quickly lose all of your winnings. Stock market forecasting is a talent that takes a lot of practice to master. Many investors spend a lot of time trying to predict how the stock market will behave in the future. For example, they could try to forecast the economy's future growth rate and pinpoint which industries will benefit the most. Investors, according to Peter Lynch, are wasting their time. Instead, he realizes that stock market swings are an impossibility that cannot be forecast with any certainty. It is impossible to foresee the stock market, and according to him, they're making an attempt to predict interest rates. If someone could properly predict interest rates three times in a row, they would be a billionaire. This is an issue that is really vital right now. The stock market's performance in the short term can be quite unpredictable, with the S&P 500 projected to move drastically higher or lower in the next few weeks. Taking a long-term approach and focusing your efforts on finding quality stocks rather than attempting to forecast the index's movement could be a better use of your time. Investors' motivations for purchasing a particular stock might vary greatly, as can their reasons for investing. For example, one investor might assume that a company's financial cheat is strong and its debt levels are modest. Another investor might think that a company's competitive advantage is the most compelling characteristic of its investment attractiveness. Your reasons for purchasing a stock, according to Peter Lynch, should be simple and obvious. If you can't explain why you owe it to a 10-year-old in 2 minutes or less, you shouldn't buy it. Knowing why you bought a stock and why you still own it, according to Lynch, might help you be more efficient with your money. It may allow you to focus on a company's most important aspects in order to estimate its risk or reward potential. What are your thoughts on Peter Lynch's words? Do you believe that his vision for money investment and the stock market is the best out there? Let us know in the comments below. Hope you liked our video. Please subscribe to our channel and remember to hit the like button, turn on the notification bell and never miss a new video. Share the video as far as possible because the more you know, the more you grow. Goodbye.